bottom of your Zoom. You can click that, type messages in there. Um, myself, my team can see it. So, you know, if you've got any questions, you can, you can certainly ask and we'll respond as it goes along. Um, but on that note, let's just kick it off and then I will see you guys uh, on the other side for the Q&A. Uh, go ahead and start the, start the show, April. This is the homepage I'm talking about that we just like recently redid. And I think it does a really good job articulating sort of who we are, what we do at a very high level. And if you scroll down the page, there's a bunch of videos and me explaining um, a, whole bunch, a whole bunch of things, everything that we do from top to bottom. But our tagline, which states, everything that you need to start, run, and grow a successful art business uh, really does sum up what we do. You know, we, we get pigeonholed as they're a website company. They're a website company. And yes, we do offer websites, but it is a tiny, tiny portion of what we do. Ultimately, we learned a couple of years ago, uh, the hard way, by the way, if we are going to grow and be successful as a business, art storefronts, that is 100% dependent, surprise this one, but on how successful our customers are, on how much art and photography our customers are selling on a yearly basis. And so when you look at that as the problem that we're solving, it becomes so much more than a website because a website is not enough. But still, we're going to talk about the website. I'm going to get into the other layers as we go down. So it does indeed all start with the website. I will pull one up because it'll make it more interactive. And, you know, anyone that's been trying, attempting to sell art or photography for any period of time, I'll use Bono today, they know one thing conclusively, selling art, in an e-commerce capacity, digitally online is not like selling other items. It's not like selling swim fins or ladies' handbags or um, electric scooters or bicycles or anything else, right? Buying art, okay, and buying art online is A, an extremely visual process, and B, an extremely friction-filled process. And what do I mean by friction? I mean, friction is all of the various different things, okay, that will prevent a visitor to your website from turning into a buyer, okay? And so really, everything that we do with our software is attempt to solve for this friction, okay? To solve for the friction, to solve for how important the visual aspects are towards selling art and photography online. And, you know, it's never any one feature. It's all of the features working together. It can be little things, like when you select a media type, which is canvas, it changes to a canvas, a gallery-wrapped canvas. Most people don't even know what a canvas is, and so we've developed special videos that show the differences, the nuances in the real world, what an actual canvas print looks like, what's going to show up at their house, uh, uh, what are the high points of this one, how are is canvas different than metal? Oops, I missed a click on that. And so you can see what a metal print looks like and how it's sitting flat, eventually how it's hanging up, all the nuances, the intricacies, because it is such a visual process buying art. We have a feature called the wall preview, uh, which allows you to cycle through various different room types. Again, such a visual process buying art. Not only can you circle through the different room types, and yes, you can add your own room type images in. We use some generic ones by design, and you can size pieces up and down, see what it's gonna look like. Do I need a 36 by 49? Is that too big? Do I instead want a 28 by 38? We're making it easier for your potential customer to get to a buying decision. What if they wanna, their, wall, their walls aren't white, right? What if they're this ugly color or there's something a little bit darker? Is the piece going to look good with this color, right? Because again, buying art is just such an incredibly visual process. Um, you know, another feature that that everybody likes to talk about that we get a lot of plaudits for is we Here have this, we are we have this feature, and excuse me, me, mute that, called Live Preview with AR, okay? And what this is, is this allows somebody to come to your website with their telephone, can be iPhone or Android. You can see the phones here on the right-hand side. And without downloading any apps, uh, they can just use their phone, their camera, and press one button on your website that says Live Preview. And what this is going to do, it's going to take the camera on their phone, okay, which is going to show the real room, the real wall, where the art will potentially go. And then it takes your piece in augmented reality, and it projects it onto the wall. And you're able to move it around with your finger. You're able to size it up, size it down, take screenshots. And so is it going to look great in the room? What size do I need to get, right? And so, again, this is attempting to solve for the visual friction of, I don't know if it's going to work in my room. I don't know what it's going to look like, right? It's just getting them one step closer to a buying decision, removing the friction from the process. And, you know, 
I've been doing e-commerce marketing, digital marketing my entire life. Everyone loves to gravitate towards the wall preview or the live preview with AR. But the reality is when you do this for any period of time, it's not about one individual feature. It's about all the features working in conjunction and you never know which one's gonna end up, you know, if we think of a sports analogy, like a basketball team, it's how many players you have on the court that can contribute, right, to eventually scoring that basket. And so it's why we do the demo process. We have literally hundreds and hundreds of features all to remove the friction, all to help you get better at selling art and photography online. And when you when you request one of these things, uh, our outreach team will reach out, have a conversation with you and schedule it. It goes like an hour and 10 minutes and we just go through feature after feature after feature. So it's not about any one of them, it's about all of them working in conjunction. Um, independent of that, let's keep working down the page. So we also have a ton of backend software. It turns out running an art business, art photography business, there's a ton of individual little nuance and things that, that can slow you down, okay? Things like uploading an image and how many images do you have to upload to your web page for all the various different media sizes and types you have. It's very helpful to be able to just upload one, have all the sizes auto-populate for you and tell you exactly what you can sell. Uh, things like markups, how do you set markups? Can you do it globally? Can you do it per media type, right? And so no one likes to talk about the back end features, but we have a slew of those as well. All um, there to make your life easier, to give you time back, okay? Um, let's talk about our fulfillment. And I, w we love talking about this. This is in our, our company DNA pretty significantly, but I'll pull up a website. So we're on Bill Stidham's site. Um, or I should probably start here, actually. So we are integrated. Well, let me start here. You can have it any which way you like. If you're an artist that just does originals and you get orders, obviously you're going to be responsible for fulfilling the originals because you have them. Uh, if you're an artist that has a local printer or a photographer that has a local printer, you really like using your printer, you can use your printer. The orders come in, you send the order to your printer. We call that self-fulfillment, no problem. What we recommend our customers do, though, is integrate with one of our print partners, and I'll get into the reasons why. But we've got graphic dimensions on the East Coast. We've got Bay Photo on the West Coast. We've got print partner for our customers in Canada. And then we just recently integrated with a company called Guten that handles the merchandise, and I'll get into that in a second. Um, how does it work? You sign up, you get your, your site set up, which usually takes 14 days or less. You click a button that says, I want to integrate with this print partner. An order comes into the website. The printer gets paid. You get paid. The order gets printed. The order gets boxed. Your logo goes on the side of the box. Boom. It ships to the customer. You touch absolutely nothing. There's nothing you have to touch, nothing you have to do. All happens automatically. And again, it's to give you back that amount of time. And, you know, no one has time in today's day and age to be dealing with the admin, okay? Any time that you spend on the admin, by which I mean sending the order to your local printer, uh, uh, checking on the proof, uh, uh, sending tracking numbers, did it ship, any of that correspondence, all of that, if you're spending your time on that, is time you are not spending on your biggest problem, which is your marketing. So we really believe like streamlining sort of this drop shipping, print on demand, automated fulfillment is a very, very wise decision if you want to create successful artists and photographers. Now, just recently, um, this was probably what, like a month before Christmas, maybe, we integrated with a company called Guten. And what it allows our customers to do is sell merchandise of a myriad of different kinds, you know, uh, hoodies, uh, iPhone cases, tank tops, um, you know, they can come in, adjust the image exactly how they want to see it. Maybe they want to tilt it depending on what case it is and get iPhone cases and, you know, a number of different other items. Um, we've got throw pillows and uh, I clicked out of it and coffee mugs. And we're adding more and more and more and more of these. And on the subject of merch, we realize, again, if you go back to our original mission, why we exist, you know, we want we need to create a set of circumstances, a set of conditions such that the artist, the photographer can make and grow as successful a business as they want. And so some artists look at this merch and they're like, they turn their noses up at it. Like, that's not fine art. Why would I ever want to do that? Some are like, I'm all in. I love it. We don't care. Our job is to provide as many different opportunities for artists and photographers to be successful as possible. And we've been totally blown away by how much of this stuff actually, believe it or not, sells. Um, and some of it is higher margin than you would think. Like a throw pillow is $44. And what does a tote bag cost? I think a tote bag costs $38. So sell it or not, you have every opportunity imaginable available to you. If you want to have it all in kind of like Bill does here on his site where, you know, you have your fine art 
uh, uh, media types across the top and then you have the merch all in one product page, great. If you wanna have individual items in the store, you wanna have your artwork fine and then you just wanna have a line of phone cases. Uh, if you wanna have one for a couple of weeks and then turn it off, you can do any and all of that and it's one click to turn it on at any point in time. It's automated, it's completely automated in terms of the fulfillment and, and that's not gonna change. And we realize again, like artists and photographers are essentially just creators right? You're just creators and you have a talent. You have a talent with a brush or you have a talent with the lens. You want to monetize that talent. Okay. So again, our job is to give you as many different opportunities to be able to monetize that talent as possible. So that's how we, that's how we go about it. And, you know, again, it's a debate about when to use it or when not, but somebody on one of these um, sessions earlier was like, you know, who's the greatest rock band of all time? I was like, no, who? He's like the Rolling Stones. He goes, guess what the Rolling Stones have at their concerts? I said, what? a giant booth for merch. He's like, they sell hundreds of thousands of dollars of it a year. If the stones sell it, I'll sell it. So anyway, I thought that, that kind of stuck with me. It was fun. So that's our, our print fulfillment. Um, and, and I should say too that we're adding calendars and we're adding puzzles and we are adding photo books. And to be honest with you, if they come out with a line of hot air balloons, we'll add hot air balloons too, right? Because again, it's creating a set of circumstances such that the artist and photographer can be successful. We don't care where the success comes from. I don't care if Brian gets into business and he's the, the number one iPhone selling case guy of the entire United States. He's got a successful business, right? So not for us to decide. Um, support. We believe we have best in class support. If you took a look at our Facebook ads and you scrolled through the 350 of them, you'll see more positive responses for the support than just about anything else. We're very, very good at this. Yes, it's in all the venues you think it is, email, phone, chat support. But in addition to that, kind of what I'm most proud about is we run six days a week, including Saturdays, Zoom sessions, just like the one you're on right now, okay? And you can pop into one at any point in time with any support-related issue and get fixed, get unstuck. There's screen shares. They can take over control of your computer and just get you sorted, uh, get you sorted instantaneously. So we're very, very good at it. Not only do we support our application, we ask, we, we, we ask you guys, we teach you guys marketing all year long, which I'll get into in a second. What if you're having a problem with Facebook or with Instagram or with MailChimp or with your Facebook ads? We actually support that too. You can pop into a Zoom session and say, hey, Patrick, I'm stuck on my Facebook ads. I'm getting this message. Can you help me? And our team will get you unstuck. That's an amazing thing. There's not many companies that do that. So I'm very, very proud about that. Um, that's in terms of the overall website picture. And we essentially do all of that, okay, to give you your time back such that you can work on the biggest problem that every single solitary person on this Zoom call has, which is the marketing problem. You need to get better at it. And let me tell you, I've got 4,700 customers, and there's only one universal truth about every one of them, right? Every niche imaginable, every subject matter, all over this country and others, every one of them has a marketing problem. The person that just past $500,000 a year in sales has a marketing problem. They want to grow that business. They have a marketing problem. The person that just is getting started, sold their first piece, they have a marketing problem and everybody in between, right? It is the biggest problem. And so, you know, we want to create successful customers. We realize we need to teach artists and photographers how to market. And so how did we solve for that particular problem? We created collectively what might as well be called the art business university. That's how we look at it because I'm not sure there's a better term to explain it. One, we have the best digital education that exists in terms of selling art and photography online, full stop. I'm, I'm hanging my hat on this. We have detailed documentation that we call playbooks on every marketing facet imaginable. How to run an email campaign, how to run a Black Friday sale, how to go live on Instagram, how to go live on Instagram and Facebook at the same time, how to go live on Instagram and Facebook at the same time with your laptop on a cell phone. Detailed, step-by-step, -step, audio, video, screenshot documentation. If we're asking you to send emails, we will give you the email copy. You just adjust it to taste for what you're doing. So the playbooks are incredible. They're very robust and they're very focused on teaching you how to market. We pair that with a 365 day a year marketing calendar, okay? It has on it beginner, intermediate, and advanced. You take on what you can take on. You're never not knowing what you need to be doing on a week in, week out basis. You start doing, you, first, you're overwhelmed. You're like, this is, I've never done this. This is crazy. How am I going to survive? And then you fight through it and you, and you got through the beginner level and then you take on the intermediate and then you take on the advanced. The majority of our customers follow this doggone near verbatim year in, year out because it works. It's effective. Not only does it tell you what to do, but it solves for one of the greatest 
the other greatest pandemic of our lifetime, the shiny object syndrome, okay? Not only does the calendar tell you what to do, it tells you what not to do, okay? What not to be spending your time on, right? And how do I know this? One, I'm very good at digital marketing. Two, we have 4,700 customers and I get to see all of their data. I can tell everyone on this call conclusively out of the 4,700 customers that I have, I have not seen anyone turn a positive ROI at marketing on Pinterest. No one is making any money from marketing on Pinterest. So I'm going to tell you, you don't have to worry about Pinterest. I see you laughing, Mary. I do not want you spending any time on Pinterest, period. Waste of time. So too with SEO, okay? So the, the calendar is equally powerful on what you need to focus on is what you ignore, okay? It's what you ignore, and that's a big deal. Number three of the Art Business University is what we call office hours, okay? We take the entire customer base, we split it into three. Until you sell, until you sell $2,000 directly on your website, you're in the traction group. Uh, and after you sold $2,000 on your website, you're in the ramping group. After you sold a much higher revenue threshold that we don't publish, you get in the advanced group, which we call growth. We hold week in, week out, every single solitary week. And we took one week off for New Year's, but essentially 48, 49 weeks a year. Uh, Zoom calls like this. You come on on a weekly basis. There are It's either me or members of my team. We go over the playbooks. We go over the calendars. We talk about wins. Uh, how it's, Somebody landed an interior decorator and sold $35,000 worth. They're going to come on and tell their story. Not only are they going to come on and tell their story, they're going to say, here's the email that did it. Here's the copy. Here's the Facebook post, and you can go and look at that stuff, right? And you're learning in concert with your peers. Digital online education is not enough, okay? If you look at the stats out there, I don't care who it is, Kajabi or Masterclass or lynda.com, 30% of the people that buy those courses actually finish them. So we can't just have digital education. We have to have in-person teaching sessions and everyone knows how to Zoom now, it's our new reality. So those sessions, which we started like, I think two weeks, three weeks ahead of the pandemic, have been the single solitary biggest fundamental change to our business we've ever had. If before the pandemic, I had 100 customers, and I told those 100 customers via email, guys, Black Friday's coming. You got to get going on your sale. Here's the playbook, right? And then I recorded a podcast episode and I was like, we're going to do this. 35 out of the 100 would take action. After these video sessions where I'm able to go through things, people are able to ask their questions, raise their hands, get unstuck, learn your peers. I have 75 people taking action on that sale and it's fundamentally changing the business. It is making our customers more successful. Uh, uh, more accountable, actually staying focused. Like, look, you guys are all solopreneurs for the most part. I mean, we could pull this entire group and not a lot of you guys have a big team. You don't have an office behind you where you're yelling at an intern to help you out. You are a solopreneur, okay? You, you know, myself, the CEO, we've been entrepreneurs our entire life. I know it's a roller coaster. I know there's highs and the lows. When you're on those lows, you need to kick in the pants, right? You need to be lifted up sometimes. And that's what these Zoom sessions do too, which is incredible. We follow it up with a Facebook group that is highly curated, okay? Uh, uh, there's no trolls, there's no nonsense in there, right? You've seen some of the other groups out there online and how ridiculous it gets in those things. And artists are sharing with other artists, photographers are sharing with other photographers, the people that are in the landscape niche are talking to others in the landscape niche. Hey guys, what do you think of this new direction? What did you use in terms of pricing? They're publishing their wins. And so sometimes you can't just hear it from us, the official company mouthpiece. And so it's nice to have a whole bunch of people that are doing the same journey at the same time um, helping each other out, sharing, what are you doing here? What are you doing there? So that collectively is the art business university. And it's, it's like a college. It, I mean, it really is. And the difference is you pay your tuition, you come in and there's no graduates because the learning never stops. Right. And, you know, in addition to that, it, it never will stop in today's digital marketing landscape. The goalposts are just constantly moving, right? Like so quickly, you feel like you just learned something and it moves over here. So we keep you up to date with all of that. As a final, about six months ago, or maybe five months ago now, we started an in-house marketing agency. And it's an in-house marketing agency that only does one thing. It helps artists and photographers sell more art online and off. And we believe already, as of current today's date, it's the biggest, it's the biggest soul-focused art and photography marketing agency in the world. And that's not hyperbole. I've been asking on these calls, can someone name me an agency that specializes only in helping artists and photographers sell their work? I haven't found one. No one's ever put one in the chat for me, especially not a big one. Why? Because my aforementioned point, selling art and photography is not like selling swim fins or ladies' handbags or scooters. It's hard, right? It's really hard. Uh, and we're good at it because we've been working at it for a long time. Also, you know, I, I get upset, right? Because I look at all of you guys as like 
you own a McDonald's, right? And if you owned a McDonald's, you have to know how to do the ordering. You have to know how to clean the floors. You have to know how to open the building. You have to know how to operate the drive through window. You have to be able to flip burgers and fries and do all of that and do the ordering, right? Like it's your business. You need to understand those things. But at the same time, I'm not naive in the sense that 80% of our customers still have full-time jobs or in some capacity. Maybe they're service-based photographers and they're trying to sell their fine art. So I get it. You need, you need to be able to have the ability. If you don't have the time to do the marketing and you have the resources, you need all the cart things that you can jump off the shelf. Hey guys, I need my Instagram profile tuned up. I need my Facebook page tuned up. I need to help with a sales campaign. You need to be able to do that sometimes. In addition to things like we'll completely build your website for you. You don't want to do that. You hate building websites. Uh, your fears in life in order are death, taxes, and building another website. I get that. I get that, right? So you can drop your images in a folder. Tell us to build the site, we'll build the site for you, okay? We'll manage your Facebook ads, okay? We will manage all of your social posting. And again, it goes back to the top premise. Like, our job is to create successful customers. And so we looked at it six months ago, and it's like, we need to have an agency. And then some people are like, well, I don't, I don't, I, don't, I want to do it myself. Fantastic. Our job is to have the best DIY product, do it yourself, learn, come on the sessions, and then also have an agency where you can pay. And again, it's a la carte or it's, you know, up, up to almost full service. And the, the amazing thing about it is, you know, I've been doing marketing a long time, right? What do all marketers love? A case study. Oh, we love a case study, right? With the sexy data about this huge win and we publish it on social media and we use it for lead generation. So totally did that all the time, okay? Guilty, guilty, you know? And if, if, if you lose, you don't publish it, right? You wait till you hit a winner and, and do all that. But it used to be, I would go and run a case study with a customer and you know, I'd have limited bandwidth to do that and then we would build the playbooks. Well, guess what I have now? I've got agency staff. I've got one guy that all he does all day long is spruce up Instagram pages for artists and photographers. He's got, he did 65 of them last week or you know, probably 65 last month. So imagine the learnings that we're getting. Back into the playbooks and then they're coming onto the Zoom sessions and they're teaching and we've got a little flywheel going on, right? We've got a little artist and photographer education flywheel. So it doesn't matter if you ever order a single solitary service from the agency. And we don't even care if the agency ever makes any money, in all honesty, because all it does is just improves the product, makes more successful customers, uh, and helps us grow. So we really, at the end of the day, are fundamentally a business that can be thought of as a rowboat, right? Um, it takes our oar, your oar, we jump in the boat in the same time, <laughs> And if we can get that thing rowing in the same direction, the faster we can get that going, the better everybody does. So that's Art Storefronts in a nutshell. Uh, that's my presentation. All right. So done with that. Hopefully that answered some questions about who we are, what we do. Uh, inevitably, some of you are probably still like, I still don't get it. Uh, we got to make a better video there. Working on that. Working on that. Iterations. Iterations. Oh, yeah. I'm on the seat. I forgot to press my button. You guys were staring at some sort of wheat field or something. Um, okay. Thanks for telling me that one. So at this point, we can, we can potentially open it up to Q&A. A um, whole bunch of different ways to do this. So if you're one of the brave ones that has your camera on and you want to do the old school hand raise, uh, either myself, my team, will see it. We'll call on you that way. At the bottom of the Zoom window, there is a participants button. And that'll allow you to digitally raise your hand. Um, and so that kind of like forms a cue and I just go down the list uh, and do it that way. Uh, if you don't want to be on camera, you don't have to be on camera. I hate being on camera. I wouldn't be on camera if I didn't have to be on camera. So if you just want to do audio for your question, totally A-OK. -okay. Um, you can leave your questions in the chat. We will pick those up as we go along. Um, and and I, always, I always get all of them. You can see some people are asking questions already and I'll pull the audio in like that. Um, if you're watching on one of the socials. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube or Twitter or Facebook and you want to leave comments there, uh, like this guy did. Uh, what did he say? Did you prefer Squidward's art bold and brash? I have no idea what that is. But anyway, we'll be responding to those too. So all of that is in play. All of that is in action. Um, you know, in addition to the video, it's, it's a crazy time that we live in right now, right? Because the offline revenue sources that many of you guys counted on uh, to grow your business and to provide income for you are, are gone and don't look to be coming back anytime soon. So it really sort of underscores the importance of one, coming to terms with that, and two, realizing that you know, you're gonna have to get attention, eyeballs on your art, your photography. I see you, Roseanne, you'll go first. And you have to understand digital marketing today's day and age. And it's really hard because I know many of you 
like week in week out i keep getting you know the the the, the same types of questions right and there's a whole lot of people that are you know they're at the top of their game they've been an artist photographer for 30 or 40 or years right or 20 years and been selling well things have been going great and then all of a sudden as a result of the galleries going down as a result of the art fair and show circuit just completely drying up they're they're just sitting there like what am i supposed to do how can i sell my art and i sort of like liken it to you know the the course of action that i'm recommending here is you're the executive with a corner office and you earned it you worked your whole life to get into that corner office and then some snot nosed punk like me is coming in, coming into your office, knocking on the door, saying, "Pack your things. You're going back to the mailroom, right?" But that's literally the situation that we're in right now. I don't I don't know how else you grow uh, a, a sustainable sustainable is just a stupid word. How you grow into a profitable art business, okay, where you're actually going to bring income without digital marketing. Like the offline sources are are just not what they were. And while I do believe they're going to come back, it's going to take a while. Um, things are getting better all the time, but it really underscores how important having an email list is, having your own list of collectors, marketing yourself, and selling direct is. Um, it's all just critically important, and I think the, the pandemic, more than anything else, sort of brought that to the surface. So I don't even know where I was going with that, but I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to start with the questions. Roseanne, you are first. I'll move myself to the left. You'll need to unmute. There's like a mic icon. Yep, gotcha. Okay. Uh, wow, that's a lot of information. Yeah, I know. And, uh, it's it's so true, though. It's the friction. Yeah. I'm on Smug Mug. Yep. And uh, I have choice of either Bay Photo or Easy Prints. Mm -hmm. And they're both very high. They're expensive. Yeah. Like I have a person in town that prints for artists, and it's a lot cheaper to just do it here, but I can't get it out to the world like that. Yeah. So, number one, is is your deal with your people either bay photo or for me it would be uh i'm in a graphic dimensions graphics dimensions yeah do you have good prices for the artists so that you know i'm not trying to sell a canvas for like a hundred dollars when you can buy it right in here in town for half of that Right. Um, yeah, a couple of different things. So one, it is, you're right, we're Bay Photo on the West Coast, Graphic Dimensions on the East Coast. We, you get better pricing on a lot of items just because we have like a, you know, combined buying power. That's number one. So you will be cheaper. Number two, um, we get them to run sales all the time. And so there's, there's great times where you can stock up on inventory for significantly cheaper. But number three, you can compete with anyone on price. It just comes down to what media types you want, right? Like a lot of the stuff in town, my, my guess is, is that, you know, is, is likely printed on the cheaper media and, you know, who knows what the longevity of that is. Is it, can, can anyone even tell a difference? I don't know, but you know, that's, that's sort of an issue with printing. Printing is really like, it's become a commodity, you know, like 20 years ago, you would go to a print shop and there would be the print master and he would just the tell you whatever you want to call him. He would just be an expert at his craft and it was incredible. Fast forward to today, everyone is using the same computer monitors. Everyone is using the same color calibration devices to calibrate those monitors. Everyone is using the same printers. They're all using the same inks and they're all buying the same media types. So at the end of the day, you opt to go with one of the bigger fish versus the smaller fish just because they're doing volume. They get cheaper rates on shipping. So you know when you're, when you're starting to ship all over the United States and worldwide, you can't compete with their UPS or FedEx rates because they're doing 30 or 40 or $50 million a year. Number two, dirty little secret, I shouldn't say this, I get in trouble, but when you are doing 30 to 40 or $50 million a year and you send a print and somehow the print is damaged, there's no returns. They don't care. They just print another one and send it because it's not even worth the friction of getting it shipped back to them and dealing with, nope, don't care, keep it, give it to a friend, here's another one, it's on its way, right? So, right. you know, I, I also bring all that up to say your biggest problem is not, nor will it ever be the prints, okay, or the quality of the prints. You know, your biggest problem is a marketing problem. And any minute that you spend going down to the printer, forwarding an order, or dealing with an email, or calling them on the phone is wasted time that you are not actually growing the business. So that more than anything is like the biggest, you know, argument for just just print on demand, you know, let them take care of it and 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 get on to the bigger problem. And and how well does the website that you offer integrate with Instagram? Because that's the other thing. I'm on Smug Mug and I have no idea how to hook them up, you know, to where I'm showing something. I guess I just do a link and it 
Yeah, you don't. You, 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 none of all them, of that. You don't want to. You don't want to integrate with Instagram in the slightest. You have to. You have to respect the platform for what it is. The minute you do an inter, in, in, the minute you do like, a, um, I don't know why I just thought of Halloween, but the integrations are like leaving candy on the doorstep, right? Like you're you're phoning it in, right? You're not taking it seriously. Like answer the door, say hi to the kids, and put some candy in their bags. I don't know why I came up with that analogy. But I kind of like it. You, you, you need to respect the platform. You need to post to it like the rest of us do. Yes, there's little applications you can use to do that, but you wouldn't want the integration with your website and Instagram. It wouldn't help you. It'd only hurt you. Okay. Right. Thanks. Yeah. My pleasure. What kind of photography do you do out of curiosity? Uh, I do. Uh, I actually, I'm not really a photographer. I'm an artist. Mm -hmm. I do mainly pastel. I draw faces, sketches. Got it. Uh, but now I'm adding through digital photography words onto my art. Oh, nice. And so I'm just starting into that. And I have I go to a printer in town who does it on mm -hmm. her computer, but I need to get on Photoshop and figure out how to do it myself because a lot of people want words on my art. They're, they're all faces and they're, they're so heavenly totally faces. So you're not, you're not putting the words in graphically. You're photographing them, pulling them out of the photograph, putting them into the art? No, no, I'm putting them on graphically after my image. My image is already in the in the computer. We're adding it digitally, but that's a whole world that I don't know about yet. So I'm having somebody do it who is also then printing them locally for me. Yep, got but it. I, like I'm tied and, and I don't even know how to market. So it's just a friend. I go speak. I tell my story. My story is the reason a lot of people buy my art. Mm -hmm. I sell out when I go speak, but I want to be... Uh, online and I want to be able to offer it to, I know my audience, I know the audience, but I don't know how to get there. And I know nothing about marketing, just like you said, yep, although I, I'm a marketing major. <laughs> yeah. I mean, a lot, a lot of good that does. I was a film major. I couldn't make a film to save right. my life. Um, no, it, was, it was only a minor, but you, you piqued my interest though. What do you, when you speak, what are you, what are they bringing you in to speak about? I tell my story because the only, I, I could not draw until uh, this horrific event happened, my son was diagnosed with a very rare disease. And all of a sudden, they told me to go home and make him comfortable. I'm in the hospital room. And all of a sudden, I could draw cartoons. And so I went to art class. And my first picture, I said a prayer because I'm begging God to save my son because no one in the world could help me. Wow. And uh, my first picture I drew. And then I asked for more. And so people are emotionally moved. Yeah buy my art because it's part of my story. You not you are not going to have a problem with the about me section of your website. About the what? About me section of your website. You got that one covered, no. I think. Yeah. 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 That's awesome. Is your son okay? Did he make it? Yeah, he's in a PhD at Fordham. Whoa. Whoa. This was when he was 3 and everyone told me go home and make him comfortable, he's going to die. And every year we're like, wow, we get him another year. He's still sick, but you can't tell and he's it's an incredible story and I'm almost finished with a book. So, but I need help with my art yes, and do. my, um, my Your website. Marketing. Yeah. I need, I need a reason to leave smug, smug mug. So I need to understand more of what you offer that they won't. Yeah. I mean, you only have one reason to leave smug mug and it's the marketing. Right, because yeah. you could you could pick up your entire business off Smug Mug, bolt it right into art storefronts. We could even do it for you. You don't touch anything. Done like that. Twenty four hours. Your business doesn't fund. Like your business doesn't fundamentally change because you, you like still that. you still have a marketing problem, right? And oh, by the way, when your book does finally come out, you're gonna have a marketing problem then too. I know. Publishers are the worst at marketing. They are the worst at marketing. Oh my goodness! They don't, it's not that they're the worst. They just don't do anything. But I loved right. your story. That's amazing. What was the disease? If you don't uh, dermatomyositis. Yeah, okay. One in a million kids. Oh, whoa. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Um, and he's getting his PhD now. That's incredible. I love that story. So yeah, yeah thank you. fantastic. Thank you. We can help you. And I love thank the, you. I love the uh, false dichotomy on the uh, board behind you. It makes, that makes me laugh too. <laughs> it's part of my book. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I can see it. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Yep. Okay. London, you're up next. You'll have to unmute London. Yep. Hello. Yeah, I got you. Why? Well, hey, sorry. Um, so how's it going, Patrick? Yeah, good. Another day in paradise. Good, good. Um, yeah, so I want to know about uh, the growing the email list. Is that something that you guys help with or is that a oh, Yeah, no, 100%. It's all, it's all we focus on all day long. You know, it, it, it's so funny because I was thinking about this the other day. But within reason, 
okay, within reason. Like if we take the, the, the highs and the lows and drop those out of the average, you can more or less judge the size of an art business based on the email list. Right. Can more or less so, judge it, right? Like, you know, we can, we, can, we can look at the email, audit what they're doing, look at the marketing and come up with like a score dollar per email. So yes, gathering emails, capturing emails, leads, getting more leads into the business is no different than eating and sleeping, daily activity. We teach, right. you, we teach I, you how to do it all the time. Yeah, okay, so you guys obviously have years of experience and know what you're doing because I have a hard time with that. Yes, yes, but it is, it is within reason, right? Like, you know, not all emails are created equal, right? And it, what it comes down to is like, yes, we're gonna teach you to gather emails, but you have to learn how to be a competent marketer first, otherwise no one's gonna wanna open those emails even if they are good emails, right? So you, it's, it's you, part sorry, and parcel. You, yeah, so do you mean with um, good copywriting, you mean? It's all of it. It's good, yeah, I mean, it, more than less, it's just providing value in a sentence, right? Um, you know, you find far too many out there are sale, 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 buy today, buy today, sale ends Friday, buy one, get one free, that, 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 and people just get annoyed and they get over that. So you kind of need to learn how to, how, to, how to romance market that we like to call it, but it really is just provide value. Right. Which, Sorry, I gotta take this call, thank you though. Yeah, you're all good. Okay. Hello? I'm gonna go ahead and mute you, London, because I don't wanna hear your call. I love you, don't wanna hear your call. Um, all right, who else? Questions? Okay. Georgiana is up. You are next, Georgiana, go ahead. Uh, thank you, first of all, for uh, taking the time to give us all this information. Uh, and I'm really understanding of the person that just spoke and her mm -hmm. experience. Over the many years, I've tried it all, starting at 10 years old, <laughs> marketing my own art. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm 73 now, and I'm still on that path, you know? Yeah. And uh, so I uh, unfortunately lost a web developer who had established my website and that of about 350 other artists that were friends of mine and did some SEO for us and stuff. And mm -hmm. we were all just babies, babes mm -hmm. in the woods, you know? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it was valuable experience, the learning uh, that I acquired. But certainly I've discovered that exactly what you're talking about constantly uh, is an issue and is an evolving issue. It's never ending. And that certainly the pandemic has taught that. Yeah. Um, that you never know what's around the corner no. that's going to affect. But I'm finding, um, do you have, you mentioned that you weren't, uh, that we should not be concerned about search engine optimization at all. Yeah. I got that impression. Yes. And I'm curious because it did help me to have somebody who was an expert in that area and it gave me exposure in places to a parts of the world and people that would have never found me other than if they already were a familiar with in some way some other method of marketing that they came in a side door at me and then you know in the wonderful universe of the web became fans I am also a figurative artist and do a variety of types of fine artworks. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm curious uh, how, if you don't have any interest in search engine optimization of any kind, uh, why that is? Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a super convoluted term, right? Like there's a whole, whole lot to search engine optimization. And so- there yeah, so let's sort of like break it apart into some pieces. You know, one you have to ask yourself, and 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 I'll and I'll, and I'll play the game with you right now. In ten seconds or less, if I was going to search Google with a, with 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 the desire to buy some art, how would I find yours? Ten. Nine, Most of the people eight, I come up in seven, a, a lot of six, references five, because four, of keywords and a lot two, of one. You know, eh. All kinds of stuff, you know, me, but me. I come yeah. up and, and and it's not because they're searching for art necessarily. Right. It's because they're searching for something else and it might be a side door to artwork. 
Yeah. I, I mean, I could pick on you and ask you, how do you know? Are you looking at your analytics? Is the traffic source say Google Analytics? Yeah, is the traffic we did. Source, say we Bing? looked at our analytics. We found out exactly where they came from. And that's how I found that and saw some value in it. Do you it have was e weird. And I didn't believe in it at first till I had it proven to me. Yeah. So let me, let me just answer it a different way. Like, you know, unless you have a very specific, very keyword dense type of a topic, like let's, let me give you an example. Like figurative art, no chance. Abstract art, no chance, right? Like you have to look and see what the search term volume is. We've got a guy that does bridge photos of Pittsburgh. He's got a chance, okay? Because there's not a lot of people when you type bridge photos of Pittsburgh that come up. SEO might work for him. For most people, it doesn't work. That's number one. Number two, the arbitrage has long ago left SEO. If, you were, if, if we were having this conversation 20 years from now, all we'd be talking about is SEO, okay? But now, uh, the, way, the way that it works is everyone thinks like, ooh, SEO, what does that even mean? I'm going to magically put things on my website and Google is gonna automatically deliver me customers. Absolutely no, nothing could not be further automatic. than the truth. You have, it, it, is, it is very comprehensive link building that takes place all year long. You have to continue to get links and more links and more links and more links, i.e. the work that you do to make SEO work is incredible. We don't have yeah. a lot of customers that are making a lot of money on SEO, period, at all. And not out of 5,500. Fine Art America won the SEO game. They I won. Totally believe yeah, you. They won, the they, they won the SEO. Yeah. That I ever met were making money because they didn't have anybody that was willing to do that full time for them. You know? Yeah. You, you, even if you did, right. even if you did in today's day and age, as with anything else in marketing, it's all about ROI, right? It's a return on investment. And if you put $10,000 into SEO versus you put $10,000 into Facebook and Instagram ads, you're going to get a much higher return on Facebook and Instagram ads. Exactly. So if that's the case, wonderful. One less thing you don't have to worry about, Georgiana. One less Good. thing. Roseanne, uh, Roseanne brought up something I think is really important. And uh, I found in any time that somebody really made ongoing purchases and became a collector, it was because they identified with the story, story. The Always, yeah. Always. behind the art. They could yeah. find portrait people all over the earth, you know. Yeah. They could find, uh, you know, people that do musicians and figurative things and great photography of the Golden Gate Bridge and all that stuff, ad finitum into infinity. Yes. But what made them purchase and create a relationship that was ongoing and become a raving fan and collector was that uh, relationship the story. and the yeah. story behind the evolution of that artist and their art. And 100%. that they connected personally and emotionally with that. So do you create like, uh, or help us create uh, landing pages, you know, vi video. Yeah, we uh, teach you, we, te we teach you storytelling. We, we teach you how to storytell and how to storytell in today's day and age. And I, and I could not agree with you more, right? Like, you know, everyone thinks we're trained as human beings to think that we're going to see this thing visually. And as a result of seeing whatever it is visually that we're going to be compelled to buy, nothing could be further from the truth. No one cares. Everyone is just scrolling right through. They might stop for a second if you hook them and then keep scrolling through. The story is the whole ball game. And guess what? So are you. So is the artist. The artist is a huge part of the story, a huge part of the brand, right? Like, you know, I use, I use a Thor instance. We have, we have this wildlife photographer and he's a big deal. And he posts these incredible images and they are incredible. But you know what the problem is? There's thousands of incredible images of every wildlife thing imaginable on planet earth now. But when you see this guy talk about what he had to go through to get the photo, how many hours he was perched, how he's up at 430, how the, you know, whatever was the thugs and the a snake sliding across him and he's elbow deep in the mud. All of a sudden you're looking at that photo and you're like, whoa, I'm bonded to this thing. I want this thing. So yes, the story is a huge, huge part of it. Huge. I think so branding ourselves and learning how to make ourselves a brand is really, I'm beginning to realize so late in life is so very important. Yes. And, and even it always if has we're been. an introvert and we're a loner and we're used to being in our art studio, you yeah. know, and producing the artwork. And then, uh, and I've had my own art galleries and had representation out there in the brick and mortar world mm -hmm. and had ups and downs through all of that. But I began to realize that if I didn't appear at that art gallery for that opening, and be there to interact with the clients and get over my shyness. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, and, and just do it. They didn't care if I was shy or not. They wanted to 100%. be there with me and see me and maybe even see my process. 
So I'm discovering if I reveal to somebody, if I let them visit me virtually in my art studio, which is all over my house now, yeah. uh, it, that they love to see the process by which I come to the finished, uh, you know, event. Yes. And delivering the art, as they call it. Uh, Seth Godin talks about that all the time. It's not just about uh, delivering the art. It's about oh man, I get up every morning at five o'clock and I meditate. And then I, yeah. you know, get, do this little ritual for getting to my art and putting my mind in that place where I can, you know, begin and light my fuse, you know, so I can go. I don't wait for the muse to come along and say, yeah, okay, a work ethic is really important, you know, and to all of that. And a lot of people think, oh, you just get inspired, right? No. You do that, Roseanne, right? You you get just inspired out of the yeah. blue to do this amazing work, you know, and it comes out of you from above, you know, the light shines on you all of a sudden. They think it's magic. You, 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 you wake up at nine o'clock, you have late breakfast. Yeah, go into the studio, paint for 15 minutes, oh, and it's done. That's it. Following yeah. your bliss, you yeah. know. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you know, my thought is that after you get a lot of failures in front of you and screwed up sketches and throw a bunch of stuff in the trash and scrape a lot of damn things off the canvas, yeah, that's when you know something you get passion about what you're, you're doing you know my and favorite you know, my favorite right there you have a lot of passion about what you're doing i'm very impressed yeah because i think you're driving from an interest that is very other centered in a way that i really find refreshing thank you for what you're doing my pleasure and i'm not worried about you having any personality uh or coming out of your shell you you got it covered my dear but to your point going back to what you were saying earlier what you know one of these one of these stats that i absolutely love uh Picasso, when he died, okay, he wouldn't do a will or anything because he was like a fatalist or whatever. You know, he, he just wouldn't talk about his own death. 45,000 pieces in his inventory left unsold that his family members had to squabble over. 45,000. And it's like, did those not sell? No. What do you think those were? He was taking mulligans and, and scraping canvases and figuring it out and putting in the work. He was not waking up at 9 o'clock having breakfast and painting for 15 minutes, to your point, right? Like, you know. It doesn't matter what line of work it is. You you you, you got to grind. You got to grind, worked, and it's quotidian. He worked all night. He woke yeah. up at about eleven every day, but he worked all night. Yeah. You know, he was a night worker, and I am too. I do that, but I still get up at five in the morning. My oven's on, but my biscuits aren't done yet. <laughs> well, I really hope you sign up because you make me laugh, and uh, I'd like to I'd like to consider the conversation uh, inside. But yeah, look, you, you're the perfect story, right? You're in your 70s. You still got another 25 years of painting to go, too. You guys are not, you guys don't go through midlife crises. Once an artist, no. always an artist, never going to change, right? Like, uh, retirement, our word doesn't really come in. No, right. no. For anybody. You know? Yeah, you're, and you're, you're way too young at heart. But I, but I also, the, re, the reason I bring that up is, you know, um, contemplate the business that you're in and contemplate how long you have to work on it and what it does is it properly aligns the perspective right like you know if i could have caught you in your 20s and said the most important thing that you can be doing for the rest of your career georgiana is keeping a list of your potential collectors and buyers and what if you had that list now you would be marketing these people in perpetuity you wouldn't need a gallery you wouldn't even need a website you would come out with a new series you would show the collectors the collectors would buy 80 to 90 percent of it and you'd have 10 percent to sell or put 5% of it in the basement Picasso style, right? Like keeping the collector list, owning the attention, having people that you can market to makes the entire difference. But no one knew that was the case back then when you were coming up, right? It was all about the offline. It was all about galleries, getting into whatever shows you can do, sure fairs and shows. So the whole world has changed. But what, I again- my first computer when I was in 1986, a Mac Macintosh SE30, and all my friends and artist friends and sit there in the back of my gallery. Nobody could train me. I didn't know what a, a floppy disk was. I thought yeah. it was something floppy, you know? Yeah. Well, they were floppy. The original ones yeah. were floppy. Yeah. <laughs> so all those things, you know, it's just an incredible journey. And thank you for being here. I've been curious about it. I tried to plug in another time, and today was the opportunity. I'm very glad I was here. Well, I am thank too. You. I'm glad you did. But again, going back to what I was saying, like, you know, the, the, the awesome about your guys' business is like, okay, she's in her 70s. She's going to be paying for the next 15 years. Contemplate the life and longevity of the business you have. So it's like, if you get the business model right, 
you understand that you need to own your own attention. You need to have an email list. You need to be emailing the email list. You need to be keeping up to these folks, cultivating a collector list. You have the business that you're going to be able to run for the next 20, 30, 40, 50 years of your life. It's staggering. It's an amazing, amazing thing. It doesn't mean it's easy, but it's, it's one of the incredible things about being an artist, I think. Um, and yeah, I mean, case in point, you're the one, right? Like, you know, if you keep the list and you cultivate it and, and you get the business model right, which is you need to sell directly to your customers, there can be no middleman. I mean, I have this, I have this thing that I rant about called, and I want to go through it quickly. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on it, but I call it, I got to pull the thing out here. Hold on. No, that's not it. Bear with me. This thing. Okay. I stole it from Maslow's hierarchy of needs. I didn't steal it, I borrowed it from Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right? And so he's got, Maslow's got his pyramid. You have to sort the physiological stuff. Actually, I should probably make that full screen so you can actually see a little better there. So you, at the bottom of the pyramid, you got the physiological stuff, right? Eating, sleeping, we all have to do that daily. Then uh, you get the safety, the roof over your head, the money, then you get love, esteem, becoming a great human, wonderful. I'm giving you the art selling pyramid, the path to a successful business in 2021 and beyond. The bottom is attention, okay? Maslow's need, physiological, daily. We all need to eat, we all need to sleep. All of us need attention. Two types of attention, rented and owned. The owned attention, technically, yes, it's email addresses, no one can take those away from you. Yes, it's snail mail addresses, uh, you can still use those, no one can take it away from you. Phone numbers, text messages, if you've got those, but that's the attention that you own. The rented attention, okay, is the social followers on any of the various different social sites. Why is it rented? The rules can be changed, the rug can be lifted out from underneath you at any point in time. And yet attention is the currency of the land that we live in. With it, you can do anything. Without it, you can't do anything. And I, I always use the example, uh, I'm getting less and less embarrassed every time, who are some of the most powerful women in the entire United States? The world, the Kardashians, okay? You can argue about how they amassed this attention, but you cannot argue about those women and what they've achieved as a result of having it, right? Any one of those gals could decide to be an artist tomorrow and sell $300 million worth of art because they have the attention. The takeaway is the attention is the currency of the land that we live in, right? If Georgiana had, out, had been growing a collector list and an email list that she could market to in perpetuity, she would have much more attention than she does now. It would be a different business. Once you sort the attention piece, you, once you realize the attention is a currency, you're in a great place because just like eating and sleeping, we work on getting a little bit more of it every single solitary day. Next. You have to understand the business model, okay? Selling direct, no one between you and your end customer. You have to be selling direct, okay? You, you need to retain the data on your customer. If you retain the data on your customer, it gives you the ability to build, hold on, your collector list. Great book by Wyland, number one selling artist in the United States, the whale guy. Can you see him? You know I'm talking about the whale guy? Dozen murals. Don't be a starving artist. Phenomenal book. April will put a link to, in it into the chat, and we'll send you a link after the fact. He talks about the importance of a collector list. A collector list is anyone, according to Wyland, that buys in excess of seven pieces from you uh, over the course of a lifetime. The only way you can build a collector list is if you're building an email list and you're building a list of customers and potential customers. Huge, huge deal. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through this quickly. There's three ways to sell art, okay? All of you guys are aware of two of them. You're probably missing on the third one. Uh, everyone's pretty much missing on the third one right now, aside from a, a few of us. One, yes, in-person, face-to-face, best way to sell art. We all know that. Two, uh, because you are geographically fixed on the earth, you need to sleep, um, and you can't have 15 conversations at once. You need your art up on a website. There's no two ways about that, okay? What is number three? The next best thing, the, the greatest thing to happen since, since forever in art? Selling direct via video, either one-to-one -one or one-to-many. What is one-to-one? -one? Uh, I go to Georgiana's site, I say, I really like your work, I'd like to schedule a Zoom call so that you can show me some of it. That is one-to-one, -one. you and a potential buyer in a video session. The one-to-many is this concept of the live art show in which you, do I have one pulled up? In which you, are gonna have to refresh this, you turn the camera on, you have some number of pieces that you want to sell, okay, and you From sit there and go and do a live art show via video, you hold up the pieces, you quote prices, and you sell them. Once you understand that there are three ways to sell art, the job is to immediately bolt it into your operation, okay? And I'm gonna send you some links to these things after the fact. Three ways, you wanna be using all of them. Everything that we try to do in this life is take our digital operation and get it as close to in-person as possible. The way that I like to think about it is, what is the best way to sell art? It would be a retail gallery in Main Street of your town. I could come in, I could talk to you, I could hear your story, right? I could understand, connect with you, and then buy the work. Um, problem, I don't live in your town. So 
live video solves for that. You be in the gallery, you turn the camera on, you talk to me, you show me things, I feel like I'm there, okay, fantastic. The worst way, okay, is the website. You know what the website is? The gallery, open on Main Street with no one inside of it. And I walk in there and I can't get any help and I'm just looking at things and then I leave, right? This doesn't mean you don't have to have a website, you do. The last block of my little pyramid is everything else. You have, a, you, you have, an, online, you have an online gallery that's working, Saatchi, Fine Art, Red Bubble, whatever, fantastic. We love revenue, keep it going. But after you're sorting attention daily and after you understand the three ways to sell art, uh, what if you have a retail gallery? After you assort attention daily, after you understand the three ways to sell art and you're practicing it, shows and fairs, anything else, that's, that's, that's my pyramid. And you know, the people that followed that pyramid, okay, had, had the pandemic hit, right? They had a list that they could market to, they had a following, they had some activity going on in their socials, and to, couple, to, to pile on top of that, we, we went through a pandemic in this particular case in which all of the places that you would normally traditionally buy art were gone overnight, boom, gone. And then you had everyone cooped up at home, cooped up at home enough to finally want to put art on their walls. And so art sales exploded during the pandemic. And they, the sales exploded and then the venues to be able to get them were down like this. And so the ones that understood marketing, the ones that were uh, uh, cultivating attention prior to the pandemic, the ones that understood the three ways to sell art profitably profited wildly during the pandemic. And that'll always be the case going forward too. Like it, that is the only business model and that is the only way of doing things in which you, the artist are in control. You're not at the behest of a gallery owner. You're not at the behest of a search algorithm or, you know, selling well on an online marketplace. And then you're off the front page of search results and everything goes down the toilet. So that's what I would say. All right, Teresa, Teresa's asking a question about the good old NFTs. What have you heard, Teresa? I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to unmute you. Um, yes, I've just been, you know, Curious. Googling every, every, every way that you could actually can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I got you. Yeah. Um, every way you could possibly, I'm not an actual artist, but I used to build those websites and mm -hmm. try to get them on Google and way back when Google first came out. Yeah. And at that time, it, they didn't prioritize their algorithm algorithms. So the small person could actually get a lot of hits. That's right. But now it's different. Yes, it you is. Gotta, yes, it is. Yeah. And so now I heard of being able to sell your artwork on a, the NFT, which is the stock market, is kind of like the Bitcoin. And I don't know too much about it, but mm -hmm. people are paying a lot of money that way too. And have you ever um, read about read about that at all? Quite a bit, yeah. Pay, paying quite a bit of attention to it. It, yeah. it, 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 you know, I would research it. I would spend some time um, trying to understand it. That's fantastic. It is, mm -hmm. it is you know, it's sort of being sold like it's the gold rush right now. And it's not the gold rush in yeah. the slightest. The, the right. point is, is if you didn't have a robust operation selling art before you went into NFTs, you're not going to just go yeah. into NFTs, but that's what everyone's being sold that bill of goods. Nothing could be further in the mm -hmm. truth. I recorded April, right. put it in the chat. I'm super into crypto. The CEO of art storefronts is super into crypto. Um, we've been, we've been trading it, playing with it for a while. You can see here, I can actually open it up. Um, we recorded an episode like on this, or whatever it was, but yeah, yeah, yeah. big Hold one on. up to twenty thousand where, Bitcoin. Where right? we're talking about it, right? um, and so it. Sorry. I got into. I just put this in the chat, and I'll send it to you. You can you can hear about okay. sort of what our thoughts are on it. Um, uh -huh. I love I love what it all portends um, for artists. I, I think it's fantastic, but let me tell you, there is enough friction right now in the art buying process without adding cryptocurrency into the process, which no one can explain or understand. Very few yeah. people have like yeah. it's it, it 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 it's not it's not worth it's not worth the time and, and you're not going to be able to run in there right now and throw a bunch of stuff up on a web page and all of a sudden because it's the NFT gold rush like it's just mm -hmm. trust me it's being overhyped there's it's amazing it's amazing but it, it's being overhyped and it's not it's not it's not it's a shiny object right now straight up yeah 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 it was uh, kind of funny because did you see the one where they had the banana on a on a wall with the duct tape. Mm -hmm. That sold for like a hundred thousand or more. Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's. There are many like newly crap. minted, immature young kids yeah. that are crypto millionaires that would enjoy a banana yeah. tape to the wall or just the pure humor of it. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah. But yeah, I feel sorry for the artists, and I, I, I have a technical art background, so mm -hmm. I understand their frustrations to be creative and to actually survive. And yes. so in the web in the web uh, designing world, we're just as frustrated. 
because of um, having to have the big guy to handle your website and, and have the money to get it there. So yeah, definitely a storefront type thing. I really think it's a great idea. Yeah, it is. I mean, but again, and, and thank you for your question, Teresa. The, the 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 website is not enough, right? Like it's it's just it's not enough. It's just one tiny little part of the entire operation, and it is, you know, the 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 the, the least important part. And I go back to my like little pyramid. It's like, you know, out of those three ways of selling art, the website is absolutely the worst, right? Like I only want to leverage the website when I need it, when I need it, when I'm asleep, right? When when I need to help sell consultatively. Otherwise. The future of selling art, and you know, one of these things that I keep citing, and let me get it pulled up here. It's going to take me a second. Um, so, you know, yours, yours is a. When I say yours, your guys' industry, and what do I? What do they call this thing? The art market report two hundred two one. Okay, yours is an industry where they don't have a whole heck of a lot of reports. I clicked on the wrong one, but oh, no, this is the right one. So, Art Basel and UBS just put out this report called the Art Market twenty twenty one. It's awesome. Um, and so, there's a PDF. Um, key findings. We'll send you this link so you can look at it. But it's 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 fascinating, right? Now, again, these guys. The, the sort of the disclaimer on this one is these guys are only sur surveying. I think for the most part, like the very very you know highest end of the highest end, the Sotheby's, this that and the other. I'm gonna read you the table of contents to pique your interest because I want you to read it. The global art market in 2020: dealer sales, auction sales, art fairs, online sales, global wealth and collective perspectives, the economic impact and conclusions. So, you know, you click on this one and you go through the key findings section. And after you read it, and they, you know, they dressed up this like lovely little website here. It's kind of it's kind of nice. They did a good job on this. And you can, you know, they've got some fancy little graphics for the one I'm looking for and little charts and everything else. And, you know, e-commerce overtook for the first time ever traditional retail sales. Like, is that really a surprise in a 2020 market? Who knows what this goes back down to? But it's a it's a huge flipping. But as I read through this entire report and like go over the whole entire thing. The biggest takeaway that I'm left with is whether you're at the very, very top of the top level, okay, where what, what, what this report is, or it's any of you guys on the call, everyone is trying to figure out the second way of the three ways to sell art. And it is the single solitary greatest change that exists. Now, is it new? No, video is not new, okay? We've all had video for a long time, but now as a result of this, everybody Zooms, everybody gets Zooming. Uh, you know, you can do it with your phone, a hundred different ways to Sunday, and it's absolutely the future, and it is the most effective way to sell art. And again, you can do it in so many different creative ways, right? Like, you know, it doesn't just need to be, and I'm pulling up a couple other ones so I can show you some examples. You can, you can no, 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 just hold on, hold on, bear with me. I didn't have it already ahead of time. So we've been, we've been trying to crack this particular problem for the last, like, call it year, year and change, right? And this is one of our earliest customers at Art Storefronts and he's a really, really good friend. And so we've run a bunch of case studies with that. But he had a, a, an art show in a gallery okay, during the pandemic. Um, a bunch of people weren't allowed in it. But here it is in the gallery. And the, and the show has already taken place. Some of the pieces have already sold. And then the next day is the live art show. And this is exactly the analogy that I'm giving you. This is the best way to sell art. It's in a gallery, right? So the next day, the cameras were turned on. Here we are walking through his gallery show. Here he is talking almost as good as you being right there. And he's talking about each piece. He's even got a glass of wine. He's given you his inspiration for each one. Um, this one's particular, this one sold, sorry. And he actually sold some of the pieces directly from this live art show, okay, that was hung in a gallery. So there you go. There is my analogy, the future of selling art. It is the, it is the next best way. And in his case, I've run like 10 of them with him already because we just keep iterating and iterating and iterating and figuring out the better ways to do it. And what are the tricks and what are the trade craft? And notice how he has earbuds in now because the earbuds allow him to connect to his phone, which is connected to Instagram. The numbers down here on the left-hand side are such that the people, yes, on Instagram will also know just like the ones that are on YouTube and are on Facebook and are on Twitter. They're all watching the same show all at the same time on different venues. And he's just sitting here in his garage studio in his basement in Laval, which is which is which is in Canada, like outside of Quebec, and these aren't even new works. This was old works that he was clearing out of his basement that he didn't that, that he didn't want anymore. He sold sixty two pieces for a little over thirty thousand dollars Canadian in fifteen days. Okay, just leveraging a new technique, which is selling in person the best next best way via video. So it's the future, and 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 I'm telling you, you guys will go read this report. Okay, from the big hoity toities. Uh, of Art Basel in UBS, and what you're gonna find is that all they, what they call them is, they don't call them uh, uh, Zoom sessions because they're, they're too snazzy for that. So they call them 
OVRs, okay? See at the club. OVRs are online viewing rooms, all right? Online viewing rooms where someone comes in. It is a Zoom call. OVRs, give me a break. It is a Zoom call, okay? But didn't matter. Uh, when you read through this thing, and I, don't, I just I wasn't prepared. It's a Monday, okay? I had a sick kid here today. But in, all, all in here, they're talking about how repeatedly the high net worth buyers are, let's see if I can just cherry pick one really quickly. Da, 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 da. The share of online sales in the dealer sector, including art fair OVRs, Zoom calls, expanded threefold in 2020 from 39% to 39% from 13% in 2019. So there you go. There's a new way of selling art. So everyone thinks, oh, art storefronts, you guys are... Uh, you guys are the company that helps us with the website. Yeah, we are, but we're a little bit more than that, right? Because we're going to teach you how to do this. And there is a tremendous amount of trade craft to it. There are a tremendous amount of ins and outs. The good news is you can get started with one of these. All of you guys have one of these. I know you all have one of these. And you can start practicing now, but we have customers that have already run like 50 or 60 of them. Um, and my job is to get every single solitary customer in, in, in our entire customer list all running them, all getting good at it, all getting comfortable on camera. Uh, many, like Georgiana, don't want to be on camera despite the personality, Georgiana, you have uh, in, in bundles, in abundance. So that's the future. That's where we're going. Um, that's, that's what it is. And so, you know, people always ask, like, oh, you guys are a website company. I'm like, no, we create, we helped to create a set of conditions that make artists and photographers successful. In most cases, marketing, marketing consistently with a heavy emphasis on selling art and photography via live video, which is absolutely the future, which by the way, call it video thirst commerce. It's, it's significantly going to alter the way that we do things in like a myriad of different industries, a myriad of different industries. You know, you, you sign on to the clothing company's website, you go into the Zoom session, there is the nice gal that has all the things already picked out for you, is gonna show them to you on mannequins. You're gonna say, ship me that, 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 that. The clothes are going to show up to your house after you've taken a look at them. You'll return the ones that you don't want. Is that better than going to the mall? For me, it is. I hate the mall. So those types of things are just going to start happening more and more and more and more and more. And you need to learn how to do it. You need some poking and prodding because it's uncomfortable, right? And, like, I have to do this, and I don't want to be on video, and I'm embarrassed. And, you know, do I, do I have to have perfectly coiffed hair? No, you do not. You just need to start doing it. It just takes practice. It takes reps and sets, but it is the future. Full stop, not even close. Like buying art on a website, I'm sorry, is a crappy experience. That is the worst way to do it. We have the best system in the world to do it and it's still the worst way to do it. And let me tell you, the more you go up in dollar amount, the more likely you need some sort of hand-to-hand -hand hand holding. Like we're sold this myth that, you know, we put up everything on a website and we don't have to do anything. We can just stay in our website and stay in our studios and create or go outside and photograph. We're going to magically get sales. They're going to fall from the sky. Nothing could be further from the truth. The highest value thing that you could do is when someone requests a one-on-one -on -one showing because and then at least you're face-to-face. -face. And, then, and, then, and then look with the upside. In, in, in my one buddy's case, you know, where is he? Where is he? Where is he? I mean, I'll brag about the numbers. I'll start with hers first, okay? And just to give you some context, let's see, I gotta go back to her Instagram profile that I have pulled up. I wanna show you how many followers she actually has. I, I can just tell you, she has 5,500 Instagram followers, okay? And she has a small email list. She had, in this particular show, 72 pieces. They were the sketches and the studies and everything else because she was moving studios. She sold, by the way, before the show even started, she sold 46% of this show to her collector list because she's been with us for a couple of years and she understands the importance of a collector list. After that, I think all in, you know, th th these were the studies. They weren't like the full pieces. She sold, I think, like 72 out of the 76 pieces, and it was a little bit over $15,000 US. One night of work. One night's worth of work, not the creation part, the selling part, right? In, in, in Matthew's case, my other buddy, where did he go? So he's got, you know, 10,000 YouTube subscribers or 9,400, you know, 9,500. He's got, I think... 25,000 Instagram followers. He has an okay email list. And in his case, he ran these two basement sales. Am I showing it on my screen? Yeah. He ran these two basement sales. This one, is there another one in here? Don't worry, I'm going to send them to you. You can watch them after the fact. Where's the other one? He ran another one. I don't remember where the other one is. It's on here. So, oh yeah. And then this one. And after he was done, he shipped, he had to ship art in Canada, where he's from. He had to ship art to the US. He had to ship a couple pieces to Central America, he had to ship some to Asia and some to Europe. There you go, that's it. All, from, all without leaving his living room. 
You tell me that's not the future when you can just sit in there and do that and have the conversation. And you know, again, people are people on all of these are are leaving comments and they're like, hey, I'm interested in that one. Hey, I want that one. You know, there's I'm trying to see if there's somewhere where I can pull cherry pick a comment. Like, there we're gonna get one that pops up. And there's a lot to figure out, and no one has it all figured out, which is the genius of it. Everyone is scrambling right now to try to figure it out, but it's just that it's the perfect confluence of everything happening at once. Yes, all of us being cooped up. Yes, everyone's internet speed is getting faster and faster and faster. So, you know, there's that, and then there's the fact that, like, everyone has cameras, and, you know, no one cares anymore. You don't have to have lights and be fancy and perfectly dressed. I mean, our TV presenters are, like, you know, using iPhone um, things, you know, to, to, to do daily television broadcast so okay all right so it looks like trish and roseanne um roseanne i see your hand but you had one question so i'm gonna get trish first then i'll get you second deal all right trish you're up go ahead got me rant and raven fired up on a monday all right trish you'll need to unmute your mic which is bottom left hand corner gotcha that better yeah gotcha. okay um it's a pretty basic question um about time spent uh, working on the marketing, mm -hmm. um, if, if, you know, if I were to join you, mm -hmm. um, I, my head's kind of swimming with all of the possibilities of marketing. Mm -hmm. And I find that just, uh, and I'm retired, so I, I can spend all the time I want, mm -hmm. um, or have painting, but, um, can you give me an idea of how much time in a day or a week um, you would typically spend on the marketing? Yeah. Uh, yep. That yep. Yep. You yep. Are? Yep. So there's there's two ways to answer this. One, the the first one is going to be a little harsh. The premise is completely flawed, and the premise the premise underpinning your question is that there's some sort of magic ratio, right? There's some sort of magic ratio or guidebook that says I'll spend this amount of hours and I'll get this kind of results. Variations of this abound. Uh, what's the best selling size? Flawed premise. That somehow if I know what the best selling size is, I'll have a, I'll have a thriving art business. What is uh, the right number of social media followers that I need to have? Right? How quickly will I return my investment back on art storefronts? Uh, uh, what is the most important media types to sell? What is the percentage between originals and commissions uh, that gets the job done? And, and, and underlying all of those questions is a premise that is there's some sort of universally true uh, roadmap that just works. Nothing could be further from the truth. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll give you an example. We've got a guy that's got a million Instagram followers. We got a gal that has 5,500 Instagram followers. The gal with 5,500 Instagram followers sells, outsells the other guy like 10X. How is that possible, right? Where, the, where did the roadmap fail us? The point is, everyone is so utterly, totally, and completely different. Different parts of the country, different subject material, different pricing, different level of marketing acumen, different personality. There, my wife has a PhD in statistics. I could bring her into this room and probably ask her and she would be able to give me the explanation for why statistically it's just impossible. I couldn't even, I couldn't even like, look the whole customer base and extract it because of that last situation, right? And there's like a hundred like that. Good news is there's an answer to your question. It's less about the hours you can give me and more about you giving them to me consistently 52 weeks a year, which no one ever does. No one ever does. And that's what moves mountains, right? That's like how the icebergs cut the glaciers, right? It's the only thing that actually works. It is whatever you got consistently on a week in, week out basis without quitting. Everyone quits. Everyone quits. That's why artists and photographers don't ever get anywhere. They get all excited. This is gonna be my year. I'm gonna work on my marketing. I work on it for three months and I lose my motivation because I didn't get the results because no one told you the perspective of how long it takes to build a business like this. First year, terrible, sucks. Learning everything, uh, pulling your hair out of your head, Facebook bugs, Instagram bugs, email marketing. I don't know how to do any of this, I hate it. You fight through those quitting points. Year two starts looking a little bit rosier. Year three starts looking a little bit rosier and rosier and every year just gets better and better and better. And you know, the beauty of it too is every year the collector list just keeps growing and growing and growing and growing. Year three, year four, you release a series, 25% of it's already been purchased by the collectors and you just have to sell the rest. So if you, can, if you can give the hours consistently, that's all that matters. The good news too is that once you do it consistently and then once, this has just been my experience, and then once you start getting some wins, it, it provides the emotional uh, energy that you need in the tank to keep going and going and going. And that's the best part about it. And so that's what, that's what we always end up seeing. Like, you know, I can only give it such and such hours and then nine months later, they're above the 10,000 sale threshold and they're like working 40 hours a week. And I was like, I thought you were busy, <laughs> right? It's like, 
No, I'm motivated now. I'm motivated now. Yeah. 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 Good. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you, Trish. And congratulations on retirement. Thank you. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Great. Uh, yeah. Um, go ahead, Rosie. Okay. So just real quick, I, uh, I also speak to the youth. And when I speak to the youth, I teach art to them, very mm -hmm. basic stuff, mm -hmm. fun stuff uh, while I'm telling my story, while I'm motivating them and hopefully changing their perspective on life mm -hmm. so that they realize they're not their mistakes and they're not their successes. I'm trying to shift their perspective because uh, the world we live in is really tough for the youth, yeah. especially with all the social media. So, and I have four kids, so I'm, I'm like in the mess, I'm in the struggle. Yes. So how, how could I take something like that, like one of the events that I'll be scheduled to speak to the youth at, would I video parts of it? No, you'd, video, you'd, you'd live broadcast the entire thing. I would deputize whatever one of those four progeny of yours is the most tech sophisticated and uh, the laptop would get plugged into the camera and that would all go live every single solitary time you do one of those. And I would probably start wow. doing, I would probably start doing them live direct on a regular basis. And that's what we would teach you how to do. Okay. Now I got, now oh, I got wow. Roseanne's gears turning and then, and then you're going to explain to me what the false dichotomy is later. <laughs> I just like saying, okay, I will. Yeah, yeah. Um, so just another quick thing about this is that, so my art becomes gifts yep. to give to people because of what they say. Yes. What, what, wait, wait, wait. gifts, G I F T S or gifts, G I F S. G I F T S. Got it. People okay. want to sell like a, a phrase from what I spoke about, what yes. I say. Oh, awesome. That awesome. Love that angle. Down. Totally get it. Yeah, totally get it. Love that angle. Incredible for prints, too. It's incredible for prints. I'm, I'm like, I have, you know, I'm so archaic. I have like a bag of samples. <laughs> yes. And, and I, and then I, of course, I stock up to when I go, but, but here's my, my real question on this is that, so obviously the digital print that's used, the digital that's used to print the glacier block mm -hmm. or the wood mm -hmm. or whatever it is, yep. or the cards, reading cards. Mm -hmm. um, in my mind, I'm thinking I have to take pictures in a white box somehow of these things so I can put them up, but I don't have to do that. If you're telling me that you can just put my image like you just did on the video there, you know, and emboss it like you did the, the Bono picture on yeah. all of these things already. Yes. So it's like, I'm, I'm so far behind in my archaic way of thinking. Yes. Yes. And yes. The, be the best part so too, how the best part too is like, you know, POD is the greatest thing ever, right? It's the greatest thing ever anywhere you can get it print on demand meaning no minimums no inventory order comes right. in you get paid printer gets paid you touch nothing they slap your logo on the side of the box they ship it phenomenal phenomenal way to live right and so you know yeah. on, on all the merch stuff that we have and we're trying to find more and more and more you know it's it's just a battle of like calendars you used to have to order like a thousand calendars and or 500 calendars and keep boxes of those somewhere in your garage and hope you sold them all now, order one, off it goes, touch nothing. Order five, off yeah. it goes, touch nothing. Doesn't matter. You don't touch nothing. It's a phenomenal, phenomenal way to and be. So I, do, so I do saint sketches. So there's saint, there's feast days for the saints. Yep. So I've been thinking of a calendar that I could put my picture on. Oh, it gets even better than that. You would, you would have a flash video sale every single solitary day that saints day is. You'd go live on Facebook and be like, in the next 24 hours, this thing's on sale at such and such. Talk about the saint. Tell your story. The calendar. The no, but it, whatever it, would be it is. A cool calendar. Yeah, it would, it would be cool, whatever. It would be cool, anything. Oh, I need help. Yeah, you I do. need help. So, how do, what do you cost? Yeah. How do you do this? Yeah. So, what you want to do is request a demo. One, it looks like you've got a fan club in the chat there. So, nice work. You've got, you've got some people, you know, Georgiana is trying to get you on her radio show here and, uh, Michelle wants to talk to you, so there's that. So you better, you better throw your website in there while we're at it. Um, okay. Yeah, request, it, request a demo. They'll talk to you. We can, we can help you out significantly. Um, you know, your, your, story, your story is extremely interesting. There's a lot of 
And where, where do I where do I request the demo just on this chat? Yep, you can do it right there in the chat, and we'll email you links after the fact too, or you can do it on the website. It's it's quite literally all over the place. But yeah, you 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 okay. you just need to modernize your operation, my dear. Get going on your marketing and game on. Game on. Okay. Yeah. All right. So this chat won't go away when you go away, correct? No, no, it's there. <laughs> Don't worry. Okay. Good. Um. And I'll, and I'll, I'll let you get to the type and I'm gonna keep moving on questions. But I'll see you on the inside, Rosanna. We're gonna help we're gonna help you out significantly. Do do not worry. Okay, Alan, you're up next. Okay, question for you. Yeah. Um this is a complete turnkey system. Everything needs to come through you. What do I do with my existing website? Um so let's do the let's do the question tree. Existing website, is it generating any income for you in any capacity currently? I really really just started to um, jump all over. I've had it for a couple of years. I've been doing it, but I just hired a consultant to, to rewrite the whole thing for me. Yeah. Um, so if you're all the bells and whistles to it. Yeah, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. I really wouldn't do that. You don't have a website problem. You have a marketing problem. Even if you don't go with us, don't don't redo your website. You don't need to. Honestly, you do not need to. Like waste of time. Well, I, I really do, but that's neither here nor there. Yeah, okay. Um, so, so what, you, what happens with all what happens with all the information I have sitting on my existing website? I have to recreate it all and put it into yours. Yeah, you have two options. So going back to the decision tree, I would say if it's not doing anything for you currently, then you know you would just point your domain at our server, right? And let's say it's alanchristiansonart.com, right, or Alan Christensen Photography, whatever it is, alanchristiansonart.com. You would just, instead of directing it at your current website, you direct it at the art storefront site. So when you type in Alan Christensen Art, you know, it just goes to your, your new store, right? So you don't lose any of the SEO traffic or anything that you've built up over the years or anyone that has the link doesn't I have to go find some data. Um, and then you're off to the races. Then it's just right into the marketing. Well, how about all the content that I have though? Yeah, so it's not, we don't, have an, we don't have a magical vacuum cleaner that sucks it out of the one and puts it into the other, sadly. But what, what, what do you have? Do you have a bunch of blog posts right. or do you just have an about me section and then the work? No, I've got a bunch of galleries and about me section. I got a blog post. I we just haven't really done anything with it for the last couple of years. I've been yeah. on other projects, so I'm deciding to take this a little more serious. But I still got to get the content into yours. Yes, you do. But it's literally just the images, the about me section, the logo, and you know, you can decide if you want to move the blog post or not. I probably just wouldn't unless you got a, like a ton of traffic to it or whatever. Is is your site customizable? Like if I wanted to put a if I wanted to sell services, you know. Oh, um, yeah, 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. Okay. 100%. So it's it the whole thing is set up for wall art, but it's also just an e-commerce shopping cart, right? So you'd sell right. any you'd sell anything. We have people selling tours of the national parks for photography. We have a number of people that are selling uh, paint, paint in person teaching classes, right? You know, where that you used to go to a class and now they just teach that direct and, 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 and that's how they go. Right. So you could sell anything, books, magazines, whatever you like. But, okay. Yeah. All right. I, I requested a demo. Let's, let's do that then. Great. Thanks, Alan. All right. Thanks. Okay. Paul, you're up next. Go ahead, Paul. Yeah. So I, um, I was wondering about you mentioned print on demand. Yes. And then also about doing the the video kind of walk around in a gallery. So yeah. how do you how do you balance those if I don't have any inventory? I'm doing it all print on demand. I've got nothing to show people, you know. Yeah. 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 We would want to rectify that. Is it so you you're a photographer then not an artist, right? right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. You would you you would have to get it print printed. There's no there's no shortcut. But you know, the, the good news okay. is and just give me a second because it's more more compelling if they do show and tell. <laughs> Like when we talk about video, right? And like, you know, you get yourself a merchandising stack and you're like, this is what a metal print looks like. It's ready to hang, right? It comes with this wood little back and these nice little felt feet and it's, and it's ready to go. Metal is one of my favorite. And you know, you zoom it in, zoom it out. This is a wood print. People usually don't show wood prints. It's really cool. The grain is amazing. It looks incredible. My thing's gonna cut it off and it's reversed. So I'm kind of out of it today. Wood print, sure, right? Sure. Notice how these are all small, right? The total order here is like 120 bucks. This is acrylic, like, you know, you can see that it's thick. Talk about the attributes of that, show the work a little bit, you know, and here's a print, right? And it's framed. So you can get very small sample sets and, and, and do some work right out of the gates, right? And you know, most of them don't need a frame aside from the paper print. And even those, yeah. you can, even okay. those you can show regularly. So you're, you're going to need inventory no matter what, right? Um, but there's, there's a whole bunch of different creative ways that will, will sort of teach you to, 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 to do that. And again, you know, we, 
I don't know how many times a year we do it. Maybe we do it like six or seven years, just seven times a year, but we'll beat up our print suppliers and they'll do a crazy sale, right? And so that's when you put in all your wholesale orders and you just, you know, you'll get, you'll get like 25 to 27% off, you know, what are already discounted prices. And that's when you stock up. That's when you okay. stock up. Yeah. Cool. What, what kind of stuff all do you right. shoot? Um, it's a lot of um, like close up nature work. Macro um, stuff? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mostly that. How have you, have you, stuff. have you tried selling it so far? Uh, you know, I've got an Etsy shop that mm -hmm. gets a, you know, very little bit of traffic and I've only sold a few things and I've got a portfolio site. Um, so that's about it for now. And, and I have a day job, so this is really Side hustle, a, for sure. a, a serious hobby kind of thing. Yeah. And you have some extremely well-behaved kids too. Mine would be throwing things at me. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so side hustle is all good. I mean, dude, 80% of our customers have full-time jobs. Only 20% are full-time artists or photographers. Yeah. Or in a yeah. lot of cases, they're, if they're photographers, they've got some sort of a service-based component strapped on, right? Um, you know, how, however they're doing it. So that's how it, yeah. star that's how it starts. And in many ways, it's nice. And, uh, you know, one of the great things, too, is that we have an in-house agency for, you know, specifically these situations where you're like, uh, one, I've got a family. Two, I have a full-time job. Three, I actually have to take the dog on photos. So give me a little help now and again. So right. it's nice to be able to go in and, you know, buy the one-off this, that. It, like, just spruce up my Instagram thing, will me? I don't have the time to do it, right? Or, you know, help me with my Facebook and Instagram ads. And so you can go and get those types of services. Um, and and it, it'll really help. But, you know, like anyone else, you've got the marketing problem, Paul. Sure do. You don't you don't have you don't have high quality headset problems though. You sound good and that thing looks doggone comfortable. Oh well thanks. This is just a cheap one that my work gave me since I'm working from home. So it actually it actually sounds super nice. Oh good. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Patrick. Yeah, my pleasure, Paul. Thank you. Um, okay, so I see Georgia Georgiana's got some questions in the chat. I will I will I will bring you back on one second, Georgiana. Um somebody's asking about the spring special, so we're you know, it's the end of the month, and I know we have some sort of crazy spring deal that's like, I think it's London, I think it's six months off or or something along those lines. Um, I don't know, I can't even keep up with all the deals, but I know it's a pretty significant one, and I know it ends at the end of the month. So that's what I would say on that. All right, Georgiana is asking, learn how to always respond to every touch on Instagram. Do I start using something like MailChimp? You do need to use MailChimp, yes. Um, the smartphone is the hands of every potential art collector, that is so true. Well, it's the hands for everyone about everything, Georgiana, for the most part. Um, it's highly accessible on their home screen. Most, yeah, you're 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 lost in the weeds, my dear. You don't need to worry about about any of that stuff. Um, we, and I'm unmuting you, Georgiana, so you can come back on. We solve we solve all that stuff. We tell you what to do, right? Like, you know, one of the one of the beautiful things about having a lot of customers and a lot of data is it's not just what I advocate, what my marketing team, what we as an organization advocate, what, what to do in marketing land. The far more important is what not to do, what not to stress about, what is nonsense, what is a waste of time. And if we can pull uh, all that knucklehead stuff off your plate and get you focused on what actually matters, and then to Trisha's question, you actually do that consistently for 52 weeks a year, you actually get somewhere with a business. So that's what I would say. We, we, we teach you all that stuff though, Georgiana, exactly what to do, what platforms to be on, what you need to worry about, what you don't need to worry about, um, and, and on and on and on. So, yeah, that's it. And by the way, Georgiana, I'm a huge Pressfield fan, too. I actually know him pretty well. Good dude. Oh, it's, it's amazing. And uh, He's an amazing Seth human. Goes, too, you know, he yeah. kind of inspired me to get my act together and He's great too. time every day. So that's part of the reason I'm here. Hey, mm -hmm. I need to focus on some resource to do this on mm -hmm. a daily basis. And all that I'm concerned about is devoting to the content that needs to be put into those resources. Knowing about them is one thing, but taking an action on a daily basis and uh, allocating the time and energy to it is yeah. what I'm concerned about. I, I work I work hard every day. Yes, work, you do. I work smart sometimes. <laughs> yes. yes. I don't work smart most of the time. Yeah. Well, that's okay. We, we, we keep you focused on, on all of these various different things. Um, you know, yeah. Oh, Brandon's got an interesting question too. I want to hear that. But did that, did that answer your question? Yeah, I think so. Cause I think I, I need a, somebody kind of coaching me. Yes. Keeping me not, moving. Not just you, everyone, <laughs> everyone needs it. 
little coaching, yeah. little poking and prodding. And, you know, the other thing, too, is that, that's interesting is that just sort of like this Zoom call, right? And already people are making friends on it. Well, imagine you go through the whole year with Zoom calls just like this as a customer with the same customer group, right? And you get to see what they're doing and you get buoyed by their success. And then you're like, I, I'm pulling my hair out of my head. And then they're like, I'm pulling my hair out of my head. And they're like, well, let's laugh about this. And then you get on with it, right? Like it really helps to have a, a peer group that you're going through this whole thing with, right? Because it, you know, it doesn't matter what your age is. You're an artist and I'm sorry, the way the Lord has blessed us, you guys suck at marketing. That's just it. It's almost universally true to a person. I don't know why it is. I don't know why the concentric art creating circles do not overlap with the, not concentric, what am I saying? Then diagram circles just don't, they don't, they just don't overlap. I don't know why I don't get it. We're, yeah. We're, yeah, lots of times as entrepreneurs and self-employed people even, we're not really taught that it's the, the right thing to do, the best thing to do, you know, that you have to follow your bliss and all that yeah. stuff. Not, well, not only that, no one, even, or, no one even teaches you that you have to do it. Like, uh, you know. Well, yeah, but also, you know, I find that on my fellow artists are always the most generous people in the world. You know, I think they so. a lot of their art, you know, they yeah. put a piece of artwork in a tip jar sometimes, you know, and yeah. all kinds of stuff. So that's a really you know, funny if we're willing analogy. to do that, why yeah. not be willing to be generous to ourselves and, and make our our art uh, responsive, uh, you know, get the response from the people we'd love to enjoy it and get paid as a bonus. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Hope to see you again on the inside. We'll talk we'll talk more at Pressfield. He's got a new book out that's pretty awesome. It's not um it's not like war of art uh, related. It's it's another one of his historical fiction novels, but it's really really good. All right, Brandon, I want to I want to bring you on. Are you there? You need to unmute. I'm here. Can you hear me? Yep, I can. So you you asked a an interesting devil's advocate question. Ask it again. Uh, I was just wondering um what if any have been the problems with, um, you know, the roadblocks people have experienced or, you know, what, what are problems that arise or has this not worked and the reasons why? Yes. And I, and, and, and I specifically wanted to deal with this. So obviously the not doing the work is, is let's just yeah. table that. That's, that's nothing new, right? Like, so yeah. people yeah. feel not doing the right. You have to validate your artwork. Okay. You have to validate your artwork in the sense that the way that I usually say it is you need to sell your art, your photography, whatever it is, to people, not name, mom, dad, brother, sister, family, friends, okay? Those people would lay right, down right. in traffic, in front, of, in front of traffic for you. Once you have sold to strangers, okay, you know that right. you have a product the market wants, okay? And so we have a large portion of people, when we ask them that question, when they're coming on board, they say, yes, yes, yes. And you know what the answer really is? No, no, no. And so what they think right. in their mind is, yeah, I haven't done that. I haven't really tried to sell it because I don't want to see any people and I just want to throw it up on a website. And then they spend a bunch of time developing the website and they spend a bunch of time getting the work up and they start in on the marketing and it doesn't sell. Well, why isn't it sell? Because it wouldn't have sold offline either because you never tried, right? It, so that's- It's something people don't want. Yeah, it's, well, yes. It's, and, it, and that's a really, really hard thing to do. And let me tell you, that's an, it's an equally very difficult conversation to have with somebody that is a customer for six months and complaining why there's no results and what are you supposed to tell them, right? Like, it's really, really hard. So yeah, I'm sure it is. I would say that's one part of it. I would say part number two is, and I love the restaurant analogy on this one, right? The, the, the artwork has found an audience, but for whatever reason, the audience is not mapping to their revenue expectations. And, and sort, of the, sort of the analogy I give is like, you're a cook that owns a restaurant, okay? And people are coming back to the restaurant and there's always people in the restaurant, but the restaurant's just sort of break even or making a couple of bucks. It's not mapping to the expectation the artist had for them. And a lot of times that's niche limitations, okay? They're, they're, right. they're completely all in and saying, all, all I wanna sell is what I wanna create, right? Not what my audience tells me they want, but what, whatever makes me happy or fulfills my artistic dreams. And it's like, okay, awesome, if, if you want this to be a hobby. If you, want, if you want it to be a business, you have to create things that the market actually wants. And, and one of the things that we notice universally, and see, certain people just have this in their DNA, the really, really good artists are almost pivoting all the time. They're trying out some new crazy subject material, right? They're trying a completely right. different, different, like out of left field thing from what they're doing currently. And they There's just do that naturally. Difference. Yeah, they just do that naturally. And what ends up happening, it's sort of like, you know, if I said, Brandon, I need you to fire an arrow and, and hit a bullseye, right? You'd be like, okay. And, you know, 
the smart Brandon would go and grab 500 arrows and fire 500 of them. You'd be like, Patrick, guess what? I hit it quite a few times, right? If you only got one arrow, you better be lucky, right? That thing better fly tra- straight and true to hit that bullseye. So, you know, the, right. the, the, the notion of pivoting, and it doesn't have to be, you know, you're a landscape photographer and all of a sudden you start drawing stick figures. I mean, try some different subject materials, right? Occasionally. Right. And so I think, I think those, are, so. those are the primary ones that people fall into. Right. So I've, I've just this actually this past weekend, I've been uh, selling in person at, at a farmer's market. Wonderful. And, Love that. Yeah. And it's, and yeah, and I, and I, I gained new customers, you know, and new, just, it's just been great, you know, as far as just, I found a new home there basically out in Lehigh because it's in the next valley over, um, one that I had never done before, but mm-hmm. found a new home there every Saturday. You awesome. Know? Awesome. Tried out Friday. Tried out Friday. Uh, it's just not not too busy, you know. Still, mm-hmm. you know, I made 150 bucks, but you know, it, it's just I, I don't think I'd go back again Fridays. But Saturday, I found a permanent home, and and yeah. it's been interesting seeing what did sell. As far as you know, one of my favorite color schemes, the one I had the most of, um, was actually the one that sold the most because it was consequently other people's favorite too there is literally no shortcut to the in-person interaction and the in-person like getting the understanding you know something i learned really really early on in my career um had a mentor that on one of my earlier businesses but here's the point you sit in the booth you have all your work there people are naturally friendly they come up they check it out they have conversations with you don't don't just look at it as an opportunity are they looking at my work do they want to talk about it go on offense well can i ask you what what's what's the last piece of art you bought well what's that what sort of stuff are you into I saw you look at that one, but what stopped you from buying it, right? Like, you know, start asking some pressing questions about if they didn't buy it, why didn't they buy it? What's the last art that they bought? What are they really interested in right now? What's, what are the artists that they're following on Instagram, right? Like, those are the type of opportunities you don't get from having a website up, right? You only right. get from the blood, sweat, and tears of being on your feet and, and, and eye to eye. So I, I love right. that. I love that. Yeah, that's really smart. And it- yeah, that's interesting because I actually I sold two pieces to a lady that said I collect art, but I don't have any room for these on my walls. But I can't not I can't not pass these up, Amazing. and which made me feel good. But you yeah. know, it's like you know, it's it's interesting. The in person, and you're right. There's nothing that there's not, substitute. no short yet, no substitute whatsoever. And you just get more and more comfortable. And then guess what? When you start turning the camera on, you're going to be like, wait a minute, I've already done the in-person face-to-face. The camera's easy. Yeah, that's one of the reasons why I turn the camera on now. And I just, you know, like you said, you better Reps get used and to sets. it. It's the way that, Reps and sets. Know. And I, and, and I'm, you know, I'm not camera shy or anything like that. It's just, you know, learning experience. Everyone's learning it right now, like you said. So. Yep. yep. Stated it another cool. way, Brandon. Do you know you get to Carnegie Hall? <laughs> Thanks a lot, Patrick. Practice. I yeah. appreciate you having these. Yeah. Thanks for coming, dude. I appreciate it. Thanks. All right, guys, it's a fun session today. I enjoyed it. I had a good time. Um, we'll email you all the links to all the various different things that we mentioned, plus a replay that happens like, I don't know, 10 or 15 minutes or 30 minutes or so, an hour or something like that afterwards. So anything that we talked about, anything that we mentioned, all of that stuff will show up. You don't need, feel like you need to save the Zoom chat transcribe or, or any of the rest. Um, and yeah, if you're, if you're interested, great time to sign up right now because end of the month, because spring special, which ends on Friday, as long as you get your demo in between now and then, um, you're eligible for the discount, so that's always good. Um, but if you're just figuring out about us for the first time, don't worry. Um, you know, we're, this is not like the hard sell operation. After all, how long are you guys going to be artists and photographers for the rest of your lives? Um, but that being said, I appreciate you guys. I appreciate you spending the time with me. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week uh, and, and hope to see you guys all again.